I can no longer remain in today's Democratic Party that's under the complete control of an elitist cabal of warmongers who are driven by cowardly wokeness, who divide us by racializing every issue and stoking anti-white racism, who actively work to undermine our God-given freedoms that are enshrined in our Constitution, who are hostile to people of faith and spirituality, who demonize the police but protect criminals at the expense of law-abiding Americans, who believe in open borders, who weaponize the national security state to go after their political opponents, and above all, who are dragging us ever closer to nuclear war. Now, I believe in a government that's of the people, by the people, and for the people. Unfortunately, today's Democratic Party does not. Instead, it stands for a government that is of, by, and for the powerful elite. Now, I'm calling on my fellow common sense, independent-minded Democrats to join me in leaving the Democratic Party. If you can no longer stomach the direction that the so-called woke Democratic Party ideologues are taking our country, then I invite you to join me. That was former Democratic presidential candidate and Hawaii representative Tulsi Gabbard announcing she is officially leaving Team Blue, which does that come as a surprise to you, Brianna? I don't know. It's interesting watching that statement because I kind of had presumed that she articulated a that she was going to join the Republican Party? No, she did not say that. Uh, she said she's going to be independent for the time being. Maybe she's eventually going to join the Republican Party, my party, Libertarians. I guess the Greens could put in a bid. Yeah, it, it's, it's interesting because, you know, I don't identify as a Democrat, but I also, for those who aren't kind of invested in characterizing me in a bad faith manner, I'm very obviously critical consistently of the Republican Party. And my issue is that we live in a corporate duopoly where both parties are captured by corporate interest. And so much of what she says in that clip is, I think, accurate. The problem is that by omitting the critique of the Republican Party, she leads people to believe that the direction to move, to get away from the plutocracy, to get away from all of the capture that she describes, to get away from some of the focus on culture issues that I do think comes at the expense of talking about the interests of working class people is to go to the right. And I think that that, that is the biggest mistake here. But I also, I wanted to ask you, what do you make of the emphasis on you know Demo the Democrats as stoking anti-white um, anti-white extremism or, or whatever she called it, you know, is the Republican Party kind of openly embracing a sort of identity politics where they've seen how the game is played and they're, they're happy to embrace kind of making every issue about race, even when it seems kind of shoehorned in like this, as the Democrats are? Well, yeah, I, I mean, I think the answer to that question is yes. Um, it's so the, the criticism of Democrats for making everything about race or stoking anti the, the wokeness of Democrats is usually so, so that accusation is lobbed against the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, when people say that people on the right say that, they're not actually talking about Democrat, most Democratic officials, maybe some you know, the school board in some California place or something, uh, or, or Democratic voters who are not, who, who, you know, outside elite circles in progressive cities are not nearly as woke as you would think. Mm. Um, they're talking about activists, mm -hmm. celebrity activists, people on Twitter, mm -hmm. um, educators, professors, uh, you know, the, uh, your, uh, your um, anti-racist anti educators, journalists, yeah. Those people, um, have or somehow those people have become spo the spokespersons for the Democratic Party well, without somehow. without being. I mean, they've been doing the yeah. work themselves, but yeah. also there's been you know the libs of TikTok and stuff that have really yeah. foregrounded the most identity focused right. aspects of the broad. And then coalition. they'll say, right, this is Joe Biden's party. Right. This is what. Right. When it's really well, it's not. Right. Joe Biden doesn't Joe Biden agree with those things. But wouldn't can spell LGBTQIA. Right. <laughs> I mean. Right. And many Democratic voters don't feel that way right. either. Right. Yeah. As we showed how well Joe Biden did. Right. Um, and the cop but, stuff is. Well, yeah. So, so that's so, so. It's a frustration with the people who speak in favor of the Democratic Party. But on policy, she is very right that. Uh, I mean, and she, she said that the only thing she repeated there that she said twice was the anti-war part. Mm -hmm. And 
that is a substantive policy that is mm -hmm. shaping up to be a not a policy disagreement necessarily because there are a lot of Republicans who feel the same uh, Republican officials who are supporting the same thing. But to the extent there's any dissension from what we're doing in Ukraine, it is almost exclusively coming from Republicans. Yeah. And uh, and she said that twice. And it's you know something we feel passionately about. Oh, yeah. Obviously, our viewers know. And, you know, if you're. And she has long been a critic of, you know, an interventionist form of nation building. Yes. And if that is your main jam, if that is the thing you're most concerned about, it's not wrong to be make that your main jam. In fact, probably more people should make foreign policy their main thing yeah. as opposed to some of these culture, ba uh, culture battles because we're killing people. People right. are dying. So if that's your main focus, and maybe it ought to be, I see why she would say, I no longer have a home yeah. in the Democratic so Party, there, in Joe Biden's Democratic Party, because that aspect of it is Yeah, them. so I think there is some real consistency there. And what, when you were talking, what it made me think of is, you know, Tulsi Gabbard was someone, I believe the only elected Democrat who endorsed Bernie in 2016. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people on the left really valued the courage that she showed in that moment and the political hit that she took in that moment for doing so. And the reason why she felt this fidelity to Bernie Sanders was in part because of his anti-war stance. So I do want to say, while I do wish he were more vocal in this moment, he has recently called for peace and de-escalation and I think is still the best of what is on the left. But you know, to the extent that you were looking for someone to carry that mantle, she previously had looked around and seen it in an independent senator from Vermont. It is frustrating now that instead of still pushing as a progressive vanguard and potentially styling herself as an inheritor to the Bernie mm -hmm. crown, which there, it was an open field, like a lot of people could have, would have appreciated her trying to fill that void, that she is making a different kind of choice where, again, she didn't say so explicitly. The implication is, though, that there is a more of a conservative pivot, especially when you talk about some of, when she brings up these issues like um, the policing issue, yeah, which is very much in conflict with some of the points that she made before. She was a star of the Democratic primary debates in 2019. We played that clip she, uh, yesterday. She, we played it yesterday. She gathered Kamala Harris, yeah. just completely gathered Kamala Harris on her legitimately terrible criminal justice record in California as she styled herself as a so-called progressive prosecutor. It was complete malarkey. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. And for her to have gone from a place where she was rightly pointed out, pointing out Kamala Harris's hypocrisy and the underlying point that that kind of approach to criminal justice does nothing to lower crime and everything to target historically marginalized mm -hmm. communities and poor people of every race, to pivot to Democrats do, you know, hate cops too much for me to be around them. Like you, well, were, you were the top cop slayer. That's why we loved you. Well, I, 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 so I don't know if there's a tension there. There could be a tension there, but I don't know for sure. You can object to, uh, you know, raise the points she did in that debate about how low-level drug offenders have been locked away and we drugs should be legalized anyway and all that, which is a view I hold. Like you can hold that view and then also think that, you know, democratic policies with respect to police and like addressing what crime are Biden not. Biden increased funding to police. All they do is give more and more money to progressive police. Progressive prosecutors not taking the problem of inner city violence seriously How enough so? can be different than. By not wanting more funding, by not locking up more low level drug offenders, the likes of which you agree shouldn't be in jail or should be funneled into treatment programs which aren't getting enough funding. What is the specific policy? Look, I don't want anybody to be murdered killed, beat up on the street, have feces rubbed on them. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants any of those things. Mm -hmm. But when she says stuff like this, when conservative, not that she has come out as a conservative, but when broadly speaking, conservatives make arguments like this, the implication that- Not just broadly, but liberals, a lot of people. That liberals and left people who are disproportionately the ones that are living in those environments and subject to the consequences of you know violent crime are indifferent, that, that is just patently untrue. But we have to be having an honest conversation. If she wants to be a political leader in this space, you have be willing to be honest about what does work and what doesn't work and be specific on a policy front about what you're advocating for and not do this kind of 
abstract gesturing at the idea that Democrats are soft on crime, which is what Nixon did, Reagan did, every Southern um, Dixiecrat did, right up into the present. Bill Clinton did, Joe Biden did. And what has that brought us? What has that brought us in the world? All of that tough on crime, libs are bad argument has got us exactly where we here with uh, where we are with the crime situation. Our progressive has never been in charge of our criminal a lot justice of, policy. A lot of those, uh, some, many of those eras were eras of genuine falling crime, and we're not yes, quite in an era like cyclical. that now. They have well, to do with the economy. They have to do with how much lead paint people are ingesting. They have to do with a lot of things that have nothing to do with posturing on a public stage and saying we need to fund the police harder. Well, I don't know that she said we need to fund the police. She didn't say we need to fund. Okay. I, look, I would be interested. So, I'm saying I would be interested to hear. And in fact, we would. I would love to have her on the show. We've tried to get her on. We'll still aspire. I know she's been on the show. I don't know if she's ever been on. Well, I've been hosting. I know Crystal and Sagar had her on before. I think so. I would love to hear more for her from her on how she thinks through some of these yeah. the police issues I, I in agree. light of her and other. I, and, um, and to your point, like I, I agree. The, the people who are frustrated with her right now on the left should be calling for specifics, not necessarily, I think, yeah. making drawing conclusions or projecting onto them what they think that she is saying. I do think, you know, there's a lot that can hide in the vagueness. And I think that sometimes people are intentionally vague because it can create a bigger tent. But pressing her on the details of what she actually believes and what she's advocating for would either clarify whether these are really legitimate critiques that are coming at her as being a, kind of a sellout yeah. and a right winger and a traitor, or whether or not she, you know, is potentially willing to advocate for some things that are genuinely left. Not just the military non-interventionist issues, but some substantive domestic policy as well. Yeah. But I don't. Sometimes I, I, I like. I don't know what all the answers are. A lot of these questions because I also I don't want to over police people. I'm skeptical in general of the police. I don't really want to give them more funding. I know how police violate the rights of all sorts of people. You know, I I want all drugs to be decriminalized, et cetera, et cetera, and so on and so on. But I do look and see the rise in crime, and I don't know what the answer is. I, mean, I don't think it's necessarily more funding, but I am I am unsatisfied with what's happening and. I, I want to hear thoughtful people have what are their ideas to fix these problems. Well, let's let's talk to Tulsi about it. Tulsi, oh, you're more than welcome on Rising. We'd love to hear you out. <laughs> well, tomorrow on Rising, we'll have another great show for you. You have to trust us on this. This is what the teleprompter is saying. Uh, so you have to trust the producers, actually. But, no, you can trust us, too. Well, now I want to know. What's, <laughs> what's, what's the big reveal? Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while on the go, we are now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. And we're also officially on Roku, Vizio, and the Plex TV app. So be sure to check us out if you'd rather watch us via your smart TV device. You have a smart TV, Brianna? I do. I've got a projector thingy. A projector thingy? Yeah, it's a smart projector. That's cool. It's my first TV ever. I'm like a latent millennial and I'm excited about it. I got it a few months ago. I can move it around the house. So you do like a drive-in movie theater, watch Rising kind of environment? Uh-huh. That's how I watched my Game of Thrones last night on my projector on my kitchen cabinet so I could watch it while I oh, ate. We'll have to talk more about that tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Stay with us for the rest of the week. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.